Cool. Welcome to Promote Profit Publish. I'm your host, Juliette Clark. Uh, we did a workshop on LinkedIn Live on November 4th, and it was with Chris Johnson, Prepping Your Expert Book. And we talk a little bit about using this same setup for fiction and even presentations. So this is the kind of workshop that if you're somebody who wants to follow along step by step, um, you can certainly listen to it, but I would encourage you to go over to Super Brand Publishing and watch the YouTube video. There is uh, a list of things you'll need to buy. It's not a big list. It's just, uh, you know, cards and, and things like that. Probably things you even have in your home, especially if you have kids, because, you you know, it's flashcards or the three by five cards. So um, I encourage you to go over and take a listen. And before you head over... Don't forget to get our magazine, www.breakthroughauthormagazine.com or follow us over on LinkedIn and get our podcast delivered to your inbox every week at www.breakthroughauthornewsletter.com. Dot com. If you go there, it is tagged onto a post and all you have to do is subscribe and you will start getting that dropped into your inbox every week, as well as invites to the live events that we have over on LinkedIn. There's never any um, reason to, to fear jumping on. We normally don't sell you anything. It's just information and, and getting you going on the project of a lifetime. So here's Christy. Welcome to book prep. I'm super excited, you guys, because when I met Chris, and this is Chris Johnson, you guys all know her from, her from the other streams, our book development coach. Um, when I wrote my first book, this is exactly how I did it, although I had no idea that's how book coaches did it because I was doing it for fiction. And I actually had my office, this like strewn across the floor and I used to walk over it all the time, which kind of made me uh, keep thinking about it subconsciously. And yeah, so I'd walk across and I'd go, oh, I don't really like that. I'm gonna move that character over here and this character's gonna do this. So this was super, super helpful. Um, and I hope you guys find it that way too. And thank you for, I just want to thank the, the people. I don't see anybody who's shown up yet. Um, but, you know, there are people that are, that are seeing it live that I can't see them. But I do want to thank you who reached out and said, send us a replay and gave us your email. Um, thank you so much. I will do that once this is processed and we will be making it into a podcast YouTube video as well. So Chris, welcome. I'm excited. Take it away. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, you know, it's so funny that, that coincidence, how coincidental it was that you had figured out this little strategy. I figured it out as a ghostwriter, mostly nonfiction. You can do it, but you know, that's what we're going to be talking about um, today. Julia, could you make it so I could share my screen, please? Uh, Cause I have a slideshow for everybody. <laughs> Me of that when I was trying to get the live stream to work. <laughs> So I'm sorry. You think it was a Mercury retro or something? <laughs> you know, it's so funny. My daughter asked last night if it was Mercury retro. I just explained it to her like a month ago. And, and so now she, every time something bad, not bad happens, but every time there's an obstacle in her way, she's like, is it Mercury retro, right? <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome everyone. This is my simple strategy that I developed to cut your writing time in half. And it, seriously cuts your writing time in half. So let's jump right in and be ready to take notes and um, get, because this is very interactive and you can implement this strategy today. So here we go. The problem that we writers have is that we get in our heads and everything starts spinning around. The reason for that is because we are in fact experts in our fields. And we have so much information crammed in here that we think we're going to write a book. And the tendency is to go, I'm going to just put everything I know in a book. And that's a mistake. So what we want to do is we want to focus in on something and get, get through all the, the, the schools of fishes in your head that are swimming around <laughs> confusing you. And just focus on that information. And that's where uh, the strategy helps you. And it's 
designed to cut through the confusion and give you that time and space to uh, to just get clear on what you're talking about and and decide how you're going to do it. So this is the confusion slide. Why? I know I have been there. <laughs> I had a client once that I ghost wrote a book for uh, who who was so scattered himself that it took me weeks of interviewing him just to wade through to get clear on what we were going to write the book about. So that was a, that was an interesting experience, but it taught me a lot about this thing. So this is how I feel. <laughs> I know some people might feel like the Pink Panther, <laughs> but we're going to stop that now. So here's the key. The key is in the prep. The card strategy that I'm going to teach you today is the prep. And it instead of trying to prep on a computer screen where you can only see half a page at a time, you're going to prep in a way where you can see everything. So here we go. If everybody, if you don't have a paper and pen and something to take notes with, get it now because you're going to want to, it's very simple. You'll learn it fast. Okay. So just so you know, I used it to write over 30 books as a ghostwriter, which is how I supplemented my teaching career <laughs> all those years and my own. And then I found out Juliet has used them for fiction, which is just, I love that. I just love coincidence. And now I teach clients like you uh, to, to organize your own books th this way. Because, and the last client I had that dedicated herself, she went from raw idea to finished manuscript in five months. Yeah, yeah, that and was Sam. Good. That was she Sam. did a good job. She was fantastic. She took she took everything. She just took it and ran with it, and it just evolved into a beautiful book. So, okay, these are the supplies that you need to prep your book. This is this list is all you need. You want to get a pack of white three by five cards. It doesn't matter if they're lined ruled or unruled it doesn't matter it's your preference you're going to want a pack of the pastels the pastels have the pretty purple and light yellow and light pink and light green and light blue and you're going to want a pack of the neons the brights the you need you need a bunch of different colors to uh to to organize the strategy then you want to have a sharpie to write on your cards and I like scotch tape because I learned from Sam to put my cards up on the wall <laughs> because I was putting them on the floor and my cat thinks that that means I'm going to play with her. <laughs> and I find the book everywhere. So now they go up on the wall. <laughs> so if you have a cat or a dog, you might want to use your wall. Yeah, that that would be interesting. Like, I'm so sorry this book is so messed up. My cat wrote it. No, <laughs> that's right. That's right. And it's so funny because some of the cards have bite marks in them. But oh, anyway. oh, is that is that akin to the dog ate my homework? The cat yeah. ate my book. The cat ate my book. <laughs> yes, exactly. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make a color code, uh, which I literally make a key with the cards and um, keep it because I just put it simple paper clip on it and keep it so that I, because I forget which card, what, what job I assigned to which color, uh, I get mixed up. So I like to have it right in front of me. So white, you're gonna, white is your main point. Also can double as chapter titles. It'll, I'm gonna show you how to lay it out in a minute, but right now just write down the key, the key white, white is your main point and your themes. Your light green, we're gonna we're gonna assign the job of statistics or graphs or both. Depending on what kind of a book you're writing, you may not need this. Um, it depends on really on what you're doing. And this one will be a pretty light, light usage. People don't like to be bombarded with a lot of statistics, maybe a little bit, but not a whole lot. The light pink, that's one of my favorite ones, is for quotes. Now, here's a little tip. Juliet's already told you that she uses this strategy for fiction. You know what else you can use it for? Making a speech on a stage. <laughs> you can use the exact same strategy if you're going to do 
uh, presentation of some kind to help you map it out. So I put bits on here if if you're gonna if you're gonna tell us you know do a bit of some kind of little fun thing in your um, presentation. All right, light purple is gonna be if you have a case study. Again, depends on what kind of a book you're writing if you're gonna use case studies. But a lot of uh, top authors, like for example, Medical Medium, he uses a ton of case studies in his book, and they're and they're every case study is directly related to the topic of the chapter that he's writing. So that's the effectiveness of it because it help, we relate to real people. We relate to their results. Uh, we're going to use for um, light blue is if you have a humorous story. Like I have so many, I used to be a teacher. I have so many humorous stories about things that happen with the kids and or their parents. So I can sprinkle those in and, and lighten up the tone a lot. <laughs> I have a question. I have a question. Yeah. Is that is that a names are protected or are, are, uh, change to protect the innocent? Absolutely. Always <laughs> change names. <laughs> or just use a first initial or, you know, just make up a new name. You know, it, it's always do that. Even yes. if you have permission to use their story in the book. I personally recommend you always change names to protect people. In this yeah. case, it's kind of an important thing. You know, it's funny. We have a book right now that's going to be out towards the end of January by uh, Gretchen Heido. And um, it, it's a, you know, break free of your dirty little secrets. And it's very funny because there are some things in there that are like, oh, my God, thank God she changed the names. <laughs> One thing, if the person who you wrote about recognizes themselves, but as long as you've changed the names and protected their identity, you're going to be okay. I have to prep you guys. The funniest was used my roommate's vibrator. Oh, I literally was like, oh my gosh. Okay. So moving on, Gretchen, <laughs> Gretchen Heido, break, break free from your dirty little secret coming in January. So you guys, <laughs> you, you need to buy it. <laughs> All right. Go Gretchen. Okay. <laughs> now the same with um, for serious stories, we're going to use a different color. So I use light yellow for serious stories. Those are ones that are, are more, um, well, serious that have more of a, an impact in that way. Okay. Keeping going. Now we're going to go into the neon colors and I use pink for personal journey. So personal journey can also be a chapter that usually we put at the beginning of kind of how you got to write how you came to this place your your experience but sometimes there are little tiny short personal stories that you can tell you can sprinkle through the book and so you'll you'll want to have a pink card to for for like I might write um oh that time that time that I escaped the serial killer depending on what book I'm writing, which actually really happened. It's, <laughs> it's one of my dirty little secrets. Wow. Not a dirty secret. It was an escape. I ran. I ran oh and my. I got away. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so neon green, I use for tips, tricks, and hacks. Uh, because it, 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 really, if you're an expert on anything, you always know little tips and strategies that you can share with your clients that you probably already share with your clients that you could put in your book. People love, love if you make things simple and easy for them because our world is hard enough without making a book overcomplicated. So neon yellow, I, I put interactive experiences and exercises. Generally in a book, they are exercises. But again, you can use these if you're on a stage and you can make an interactive experience. It could be as simple as, hey, you guys, let, we're going to go take this quiz right now. Everybody, um, here's, you know, go on your phone and here's the quiz link and take this quiz right now. And it's interactive for them and they like it and then they get to talk about it. And that, that goes over really, really well. And the last one are your calls to action. You must, that's the bright orange. Uh, you definitely, you don't have to put a call to action in every single chapter, but you do need to have at least a couple calls to action because you, it can be as simple as join my Facebook group or, hey, email me at this email address or go to my website. It, but it's something that they do that helps you build a relationship with your client. 
And since your book is a huge, huge source of reach, getting to people that don't know you yet, you want a call to action in there. You want to make yourself really accessible to them. Okay, now, I, these, I, um, the next step is what you're going to do is you kind of, you write, you use your Sharpie and you write on the cards what you're going to do. Now, this, I just, I didn't uh, put in anything specific here. This is an example. But what you want to do is you want to put your chapters in vertical columns. I stuck these up on the wall. And so you see at the top, there's a white card. That's the main point of this chapter. If I were doing the real book, which I'm going to show you in a real example in a minute, but I just want to show you the overview first. Um, <clears throat> you want to put the main point of the chapter. Sometimes when you write the main point of the chapter, you end up with a great chapter title. So <laughs> they can double. And then you want to just put, you want to take what you think. So maybe I want to put a quote first that's related to my main point. So I'm going to put my light pink card. And if I were doing this for real, I would put what quote it is because there's a kajillion quotes out there. So just saying quote is kind of vague. <laughs> so I would probably say, oh, that quote about imagination by Einstein. So I would remember what it is. And then, like I said, you, if you want to put a short personal, in this case, in this example, I just wanted to, this is just an example. This isn't how you have to do it. You will figure out how to do it. But I put a little, like an, a short personal journey story that's re also related to the main point. Then maybe I have a secondary main point. So you see, I have a white card there uh, that's still related to this main chapter title, but it it, it, it like supports it. It's like supporting information. Way back to 12th grade English when you had to learn how to write. <laughs> Don't write like an English teacher. Okay, just forget all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> Don't be a grammar Nazi. No. <laughs> your editor can be a grammar Nazi. But exactly. You should, you should talk in your normal voice. Yes. Okay. And then anyway, so you see how I kind of ended with a CTA here. And then on the second chapter, I didn't complete this. I just did this as an example. Maybe I start with a statistic in this one and go to a case study. So you see how the, the colors visually cue you that you've got interesting, different, that you're not just blah, 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 blah at them. You don't want to be a talking head on paper. It's a bad idea. It doesn't work. You'll lose your audience. They'll be, they'll read a page and they'll be they'll be like, this is boring and go on to the next book. So this helps you get it, get interest. And uh, it, it also helps you break up what you're writing and gives you more to work with to focus your idea. So here's, I told you I was going to have a real life sample. I'm actually writing a book right now called Crack the Homeschool Code. And I, li this literally happened yesterday. <laughs> I, I just sat down and I started thinking. Now, the first, this is literally my first day of thinking this through. So it's kind of a brain dump, but you can see how I how I um I made the vertical columns. I put at the top what I wanted to talk about in that chapter. You can see my last one over here. I have the I, I have what I want to do with it, and I just I had to stop because I had a, a client call. So I um you know, I take care of my clients. But anyway, you can see how I'm starting to lay it out. And this will evolve as I go along. I obviously there's only what one, two, three, five chapters in there so far, there's going to be more, but it's, uh, it's developing already. So what I want you to remember too, is you don't have to have all the colors in every chapter, you want to mix it up. So if you're going to sprinkle in some stats in a chapter, then don't do stats in the next chapter. Kind of mix it up so that the reader doesn't go more, more grass, you know. Mix it up a little bit so that so that they the reader kind of goes with you. Our brains don't really think. I know that there are people who think in a linear way, but I think a lot, I think most people think in a more creative way as they might eventually get it to be linear, but they our minds kind of go around. We're creative. We're humans. We're creative. And so we want to mix stuff up a little bit, especially when you're playing with developing your book content. You want to have some fun with it. So now I did this to show you. 
the next step is after you've got what you your first ideas laid out, you do not want to start writing yet. What you want to do is you want to live with it. Juliet already referred to this when she said, oh, wait, this character doesn't do this in this chapter. I'm going to move that card over here. It is so much easier to move cards than it is to try to find it in a document on your computer where you can only see half a page. Move it on the wall. Say, oh, wait, I don't want to, I, I don't want to, I'm going to show you what I did here. I moved. See, I, I decided, oh, I'm going to take this short personal story. See the pink card right here? I thought it needs to go in this chapter. I'm going to switch that with the case study because I think that'll work better. And you live with it because you know the information. You don't need to write every detail on the cards. You already know the information. You, these cards are just to remind you what you want to talk about in that space. Then, yes. And then here I, I added to this one here, I added in a tip card. I thought, oh, okay, what if um, I give them these statistics with a story and then I can give them a tip that they can directly use right now. So you can add cards. You can go, you know what? I repeated myself here. I'm going to take this one out. And you, you play with it until you get it to where you feel like you're looking at that board and you're going, yeah, that's it. Now, now prep, be willing to spend time on prep. Uh, Kate, you know, actually out of that five months that Sam did this, she spent the first two months just on this. So when she wrote, she just whipped through her chapters, like just boom. She knew she had it all there and all she had to do was write it down. And, and then she sent it to me and I edited it for her. So <clears throat> you just, that's what you do. You just keep repeating, rearranging until you get all the columns, the way you want them, all the chapters, the way you want them. You might find you've got a chapter that doesn't fit like you know, I'm talking about X, but this chapter really is about Y. Take it out. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't lost anything because you haven't really written anything yet. Yes, yeah. Juliet. You have okay, a I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, I used to take this and then create my outline. And so, for those, I know we have a lot of people who speak their book. Um, I, I know myself, I tell a lot of people who say, I don't have time to write. I'll ask them, how much time do you spend in the car? And when they tell me, I'll say, why don't you carry your outline around and record when you're driving or record when you're, um, you know, when, when you have some free time, because it's so much yeah. easier. So once you get this done and before you write this prep goes into the outline, correct? Yes, but um, I'm, I'm going to tell people that that is an optional step okay. because really I, I skip it. Um, I don't need to, to me, this is an outline. I don't, I know all, every card, I know what I want to say. And I just take a chapter in, in the order that I put it and I just start writing and I just finish, I go, okay, I want to say this, flip the card. Oh yeah, this story, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, this, and I don't. But there are people that do need a linear outline. And I also think if you're doing fiction, that that outline will benefit you. Because fiction, honestly, guys, fiction is a lot harder to write. It is much more detailed. It is much more complicated because you have all the elements of fiction in there. You've got to build characters. You have to build a plot. It has to make sense. You have to, they have to have depth and and you know, the, the bad guy can't just be pure evil. There has to be some depth there. And there's all these things and it has to resolve in a satisfactory way. I, there's just all sorts of things that go into fiction where nonfiction, you don't really have that burden. And so it's a little easier. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing with fiction is that you wouldn't really drive and tell the story because you do need, you know, the, he said, she said, yeah. The, you know, there's, a, you probably wouldn't speak that, but you would with an expert book. You could with an expert you book. Definitely can with an expert book because you already know what you want to say. The cards are, are to remind you of what you want to say, where you want to say it. So it makes logical sense to your reader and has a nice flow. So that when your reader's reading it, they're going, oh yeah, this is cool. Oh, this, what a story. Ooh, next point. Ooh, nice. wow. This person had this experience. Oh, look at this tip. I'm going to go try. I'm going to go do this right now. 
And you want your readers to do that because then when they're done with your book, they're a fan. Right. You've got, you've, you've developed a beginning of a relationship with them. So, all right. So that's, that's the next thing. When you're ready, you just take a chapter, keep them in the order that you have them, take it off the wall and just write it. <laughs> um, here's a, now I would recommend that you go ahead and just write it in order. But if you're working with a book developer like me, um, I will, I, you can write them out of order and send them to me and I can build the manuscript. Uh, that that's what I did for Sam. She just sent me a chapter. <laughs> we would, we talk about it and we, we built the manuscript out. I, so she was, she was focused just on the writing, which was really, really good because she wasn't concerned about all the stuff that comes later. You know, editing is the hard part. It's the brutal part. And so, yeah. It was, it, yeah. it's the hard part, but prep yeah. will save you a lot on editing. <laughs> yeah. But before that, let's just say something that I see a lot. Uh, editing isn't just a, oh, I've done my first draft. I'm sending it to an editor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, you're like, oh, I heard you whispering there. You have to rewrite. You have to. Rewrite. And, and, and sometimes rewrite can be really like, oh, I have to rewrite this. And there are other times you can get a good giggle out of it. I mean, I've literally like looked at it and gone, what the heck? Did I have a major brain fart that day? Because you'll see you misspelled stuff. You'll see, I my thing is like pair, pair. I'll use the wrong version of the word. Like there's a pair of doves and it's P-E-A-R. Like what the heck was I thinking? <laughs> so you guys, you have to be really intentional about this just because you got through I always recommend that you put your prep together and then you just write the whole yeah. thing don't micromanage you're yeah. never going to get your book done if you keep rewriting chapter one yeah and I've I've heard people actually say oh I you know I've been working on this book for five years oh great how much do you have done oh I'm still in chapter one mm-hmm like, so get that whole, after you've done this prep, get that whole book out and yes. then start the rewrites. And then when you're satisfied with rewrites, send it to the editor. You know, I have a, a strategy that people can use. That's really simple uh, to, to, for the editing part. You guys, should I share it? It's really yeah, easy. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things we need once we finish that first draft, which Juliet is absolutely right. Please do that. Prep it, write the draft, and then pick, say, three to five trusted people, but not your mother. <laughs> trusted friends who, uh, who and, and literally print out a manuscript for each one of them. And you give it to them with a red pen and a yellow highlighter. And you tell them, I want you to brutally read this and I want you to criticize everything you don't like. Like, don't, don't hold back because you're, you have to take your ego out of it and you have to go, this book has to be good. It's not about me. It's about my readers. It's about my, my readers and building my business. And so anyway, what they do with the red pen is they circle all the typos. So when they see pear spelled wrong, <laughs> they, they can circle it. You can, they can correct it if they want. Um, how, however they want to do it. The yellow highlighter is for a confusing passage. Like, what the heck is this? And why is it in here? Highlight it. And then in the margin on the page, right where that yellow highlight is, write your questions. Do not write your questions at the end because the, your, the, your, your author won't know. <laughs> <laughs> what they're talking about, write the question right next to the part that's confusing. Like, where did this come from? This doesn't fit here. Um, whatever the whatever the suggestion is, and then when you get back your your three to five correct, go through and correct everything, and it saves. And then while oh, here's the best part: while they're doing that, you, the author, takes a break. When you allow, when you step back from it and let it go for a little bit, it's usually about two weeks. Um, for people to get back to you, you give yourself your brain a chance to let it, it work in the back of your mind and things start clicking in. 
And when you come back to it, you look at it with fresh eyes and you go, oh, and then your second draft is much, much easier. So that's an extra strategy you guys got today. <laughs> okay, here are a couple of my pro tips. Do not write the chapter numbers on your white cards until after you have finalized your order. Because if you do that, you have to keep crossing them off. <laughs> so don't do that until the end. Do clip your notes together. I have, um, I use just a simple clip like this to keep my notes together. Because uh, if you drop them, they go everywhere. And if you have a cat like mine, they even go more everywhere. <laughs> Your cat sounds like she rules your life. Oh, she's, she, I call her a devil cat, but I love her. She's, she's just very playful. And so it's okay. Uh, and then, okay. If you lay your board out on the floor, which um, I have done because my, my kitchen table is very small and it's not big enough to lay out all the cards. So I've laid them out on the floor. <laughs> That's why I wrote this on Juliet. Be sure your cat is elsewhere. <laughs> okay. Does it, any questions, anyone? Well, if you guys, if you guys have any, any questions, you can always email us through LinkedIn, message us through LinkedIn and be happy to, happy to talk to you anytime. And if you, you know, if you want to have a one-on-one, -on -one, just uh, message me on LinkedIn, Christy Boyd Johnson, and, and I'll uh, send you my calendar. And okay. same with Juliet. Juliet will do that too. <laughs> yeah, sounds great. So next couple months, next, next month, we have Julie Loken, uh, who's going to come on and talk to us, I think about some branding and, and messaging. And then uh, January, we've already got January set up. Mark Hirschberg uh, is going to talk to us about Brain Bump and actually sort of walk us through what his new app for authors does. So we've got some good stuff coming up in the next couple ones, as well as Chris's was great today, too. So, all right, you guys, <laughs> thanks for stopping by. See ya. See ya.